invasive species has to be one that's come from someplace else. And more than that, it's one that wreaks havoc on the environment because it takes over, it tends to invade, displace other species, and change the ecology of the, the place that it lands. You end up with fewer and fewer and fewer plants and it leads to extinctions. In fact, there's an estimate that about 60% of plants and animals that are extinct have become extinct either in part or in whole because of invasive species. I work with the Como Watershed Group in Coquitlam and uh, their main purpose is to uh, try to effectively deal with the conservation of wild spaces in urban areas. It can be a very daunting task when you, you do restoration work and then you come back you know, fairly soon within one season and you find a lot of the, uh, the alien invaders that you've been trying to deal with uh, seem to be you know, coming back quite effectively. There's a lot of ways that they can spread. People plant them in their gardens. Uh, people move seeds on their feet. Ducks and birds can move seeds as well. Um, birds will eat berries and drop the seeds in the park. Uh, people clear highways and clear land for development or for um, hydro lines, and that opens up corridors and invasives can spread in. They spread down streams as well. Purple loosestrife, which was a very invasive uh, marginal water plant that caused real problems in the, uh, the areas in central North, North America where it, it, it uh, messed up waterfowl habitat. Now you can't find it, and even some of the cultivated varieties of loosestrife that allegedly don't spread as much, the sale of those has been actively discouraged, so you won't find many varieties around anymore. Today is our 11th uh, Ivy Busters program in Stanley Park. One of the reasons, of course, why it's invasive, because nothing eats it. English ivy uh, grows um, in, the, in the ground, and, but also climbs the trees, right? And they are very resistant. Even when you pull after a month or more, two months, they're still green. People do just, they plant ivy on, the, uh, on their backyards, and then when they clean their backyards, they, they threw the refusal hot here. This is Scotch Broom. And our volunteers, weed busters, have already removed about 90% of the broom in the park. These seeds can last for up to 60 years. If you've got this in your yard, you can dig it out by the roots or you can cut it off at the base. It might start to sprout again, but if you continue to cut it, you will manage to get rid of it. We always joke about the classic customer who's got a latte in one hand and a big, thick gardening book in the other. So people have done a lot of research and they've got a good idea. And, and what we've tried to do here in the store is we, we try to take the philosophy of really stressing that people buy the right plant for the right place. Often a plant that's invasive in the wild is often invasive in your garden as well. And so they tend to be plants that are best to avoid in the first place. This is Japanese knotweed. Its roots can grow as deep as eight or nine feet and will spread as much as 20 feet in one season. It'll grow to about 10 feet by midsummer. And so what might start out as one or two stems can soon be 100 stems. All of the plants right across North America and in England as well are clones of a plant brought from Japan almost 100 years ago. Salmonberry is a great example of a native plant. Its berries will be eaten by birds, but right now its flowers are really important for hummingbirds. Another native plant that we have here is elderberry, and its berries will be eaten by birds later in the season. However, there's a problem, and that's this plant right here. This is Purple Policeman's Helmet. It's an annual that has explosive seeds. Within a few months, by midsummer, it'll be about this tall. They'll take over an area and then die off in the winter, leaving bare patches that get eroded by streams. It was a really good first step at uh, trying to identify the problem. We don't have issues about tree harvesting or ranching in a lot of areas in the Lower Mainland but we do have a fairly heavy investment in natural areas and open spaces and greenways and parkland that are being impacted by invasive plant species. Right now we're at a phase where 
people are becoming more and more aware of the problem and different agencies are starting to work together. And it really is a problem that transcends boundaries. My goal, if I can have uh, at least a thousand volunteers, there is a body of knowledge built already, but it's not, there's still lots of questions to be answered about Ivy. Our organization doesn't really consider um, giving up anytime soon, so there's too much at stake here for us.